What's up, everybody? This is the Digital World Podcast. Today we're going to talk about this, well, some news about the SEC lawsuit. And so let's jump right in. Whoops, right here. Okay. So it says, SEC has evidence that Ripple's Chris Larson keeps moving his XRP despite facing lawsuit. And so it goes here, the SEC wants to know whether the proceeds from XRP sales are a major source of income for the uh, Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson. And a letter to the judge, the SEC senior trial journey, George D. Tenreiro, writes that the agency has obtained evidence that Larson appears to continue moving his XRP in spite of legal scrutiny. Now, we know, oh, they're also alleging, sorry, here, I just want to uh, note this here, and it's landmark lawsuit against Ripple. The agency alleges that Garlinghouse and Larson netted $159 million and $450 million, respectively, in proceeds from their XRP sales. And so this is getting a little more uh, uh, detailed, and they're they're wanting to see more and more um, personal things from Chris Larson and Brad Garlinghouse. Now we know, for example, Chris Larson moved a huge sum of XRP to NYDIG, and he talked about it and said how they had uh, really good custody custoding, um, high level grade custoding, and He's been moving it all sorts of places, and so has Brad Garlinghouse. And so, essentially, the SEC wants to figure out that if they've been using that to profit off of it, just as stated here. Now, we're going to go and see some emails that they're using as evidence. And if you look in these emails, it said, this is a conversation between, it seems like, Cameron Kinlock and Brad Garlinghouse. And it's saying here that Chris gave three and a half billion XRP and Ripple matched that. And this was approved by the board a while ago. And this committed XRP is already excluded from our publicly reported holdings of XRP. Huh. And so it says today only one billion of XRP out of the three and a half billion has been transferred to Ripple Works. Chris is now looking to transfer another one billion XRP. And so this is an old email from 2016. And so the SEC is trying to dig deeper and dig deeper. And we'll see um, what it looks like later on. Hopefully we get an update. I know uh, Jeremy Hogan has posted about it. um, The SEC looking further into it. And he said it, it seems like it may be one win for the SEC. So we'll wait on further news about it but this seems to be at the forefront right now based on what we have on further news we see that the world bank says that the inner ledger is very promising for the payments and it says the world bank calls inter ledger protocol very promising for interoperability in the cost area and they operated three inter ledger nodes linked to two blockchain tests And so this seems to be getting attention by the World Bank, which is associated with the IMF. And if we look at the World Bank document, we see here the team tried to run three nodes connected to two blockchain tests, the Ethereum and Ripple XRPL. Okay, we see that the party A, Interledger, acting as an intermediary node, and party B, party A sent Ether and party B's node received XRP while a third node acted as an intermediary during the token exchange. To accomplish this, party A with Ether needs to be in need with party A, party A with Ether needs to be install a segment engine to transfer Ether from Ethereum testnet to the intermediary node through settlement engine for ETH. And so we see here the exploration process flow and how it would work. Okay? I recommend you go give this a, a read, um, but it looks like they've been testing it and observing it. Okay, now they give here uh, cross border payments and settlement and current interop- interoperability initiatives, and they give a layout for the cross border interbring payments and settlements and how they envision it being from 
country A to country B. And you see here Universal Central Bank Digital Currency Exchange. And it, it shows the platform connectivity and interoperability. And you gotta wonder, I mean, this stuff is just, I feel like it's creeping in in every single uh, crevice that there is. Under each rock that you pick up, you see Ripple or its protocol um, and its uh, native token XRP being mentioned. And it's hard to refute the evidence or is it just all coincidences that they just happen to mention something and they say that, oh, it works. It solves the cross-border frictions that there is in, in the old legacy system, which is antiquated, antiquated, if I may add. You got to wonder about these things, huh? Like after a while, it's not a coincidence if it happens over a... a <clears throat> Over time, over a series of times, those are starting to become facts. So, I thought I'd end on this note by I Am Legion. He uh, sums it up pretty good. He says, Interledger, interledgers tested by the World Bank, the European Central Bank, the Bank of Japan, and the Bank of England. And... We all know where this is headed. We all know. It's just a waiting game. It's simply just a waiting game. Can you be patient enough to wait? And I think this community has ice in their veins. And they, they, if they understand what they own. And they're waiting for that moment. And so we obviously got to keep a level head. You can't get too high or too low. But if you know what you own, then you don't have to worry. You just sit back, relax, and let it do its thing. And participate in the community. Encourage others to participate and get involved. Help this community grow. Hope this episode has brought you some value. Like and subscribe. And know that the World Bank, aside from other Central banks are participating and testing the ledger. This is the Digital World Podcast, and I'll see you in the next episode.